Hi, in this video I want to share with you my Shadow Flurry Rogue. Um, some call it also Rapid Fire Flurry Rogue and it's made popular by the Diablo streamer Woodio. So um, since I really like his build and his uh, pioneer work on that kinda, I have uh, worked on it a bit and I think I even could make it a little bit better, especially for the season one. So since uh, he didn't post any updated version for this build in season one, I think I can do that for him and <laughs> yeah, just share with you my um, version of it, kind of. And yeah, as always, you can see some gameplay in the beginning and like um, I want to talk about the big advantage of this build first. So like um, many of you, I think may many of you want to play the Barber Rogue build at some point. So Barber Rogue is considered very powerful. Then on my channel as well, I am a very big fan of Poison Rogue, as you know. So I think Poison Rogue also is one of the best uh, season one Rogue builds. But these builds have some um, disadvantages in um, like regarding Especially you need uh, specific gear and specific, um, yeah, also hearts. Like for the bar barber build, obviously you need a barber heart. So if you cannot find a barber her heart, then it's <laughs> not possible to play this build. And also for Poison Rogue, like for my, for my uh, guy that I uploaded, uh, it requires some items. And actually I, um, I kind of found out that Penitent Griefs are not that uh, easy to drop as I believed because in the Eternal Realm, like before Season 1, I found like 10 Penitent Griefs uh, from level 60 to 80 or something and now I'm 80, uh, level 83 and I didn't find any Penitent Griefs yet, so uh, yeah, there are some problems with uh, playing some builds that I really like. And so Flurry Rogue, uh, Shadow Flurry Rogue for me was a very good alternative for especially leveling up my Rogue in Season 1. Since you don't need many aspects or legendary gear um, to make it work. And also you actually don't need Raffle Hearts at all. So uh, I'm playing right now with the Raffle Heart that gives, that applies all um, imbuement imbuements on your skills but actually I found out this is kind of buggy at least for me so I never noticed that I'm applying imbuements on my skills so I don't know maybe this heart is kind of bugged and uh, yeah I don't know for me it doesn't work uh, well so yeah but this build doesn't require don't uh, yeah you don't need any raffle hearts for this build to make it work and that's one of the big advantages and also since this is a flurry uh, build Another big advantage is that you don't need the exploit glyph to really make this uh, build work. So like in the twist, yeah, mostly most twisting blades rogue uh, builds, you kind of need the exploit glyph because as a twisting blades rogue you don't have many opportunities and possibilities to make all the enemies you hit vulnerable. So yeah, that's why it's kind of slow maybe until the point that where you get where you can level up the exploit lift and here I died. Um, too much freezing effects, this is a very hard uh, room I th consider. But yeah, just to mention also here you can see I'm running a Nightmare Dungeon which is uh, 10 levels above me. So yeah, just as a proof that this build also works very well on uh, enemies 10 levels above you. Where you get the additional 15% uh, experience. So yeah, just to mention that. And so yeah, flurry builds usually they have a very nice way to apply vulnerability because uh, yeah, flurry itself can apply it um, very easily. So I think this is uh, another big advantage of this build, especially for your mid game and early game um, until you reach the point where you can level up your exploit glyph at level 15. So yeah, um, I would say these are the two big advantages. And I mean, it's also still a lot of fun. So if you are just tired of playing uh, Twisting Blades uh, and would just want to switch something up and yeah, maybe wait until you drop that uh, nice Barber Heart or something. Or for example, my problem also is I, I already found a Barber Heart, a good one, but 
I don't have really nice jewelry, so I only found like one good ring. Like at level 80, I found one decent ring, but my amulet and my second ring are just so trash that I just don't want to put barber heart on it. So I just need something um, in between. So yeah, and I think this build is perfect for that. Um, if you want to um, go into very big detail on how to play Flurry Rogue, um, you can also watch my other videos on this channel. I have uh, many videos about Flurry Rogue. But the basic idea is you just uh, use your puncture on the first enemy that you hit. So each combat you start uh, with uh, one cast of puncture. Uh, or actually in this version you can also cast up to three times your puncture because we play with combo points. And then you cast your flurry and all your enemies around you will get vulnerable and basically if you have decent gear they all are kind of one shots or two shots. So it's actually very easy to play and um, yeah, I don't think I need to show this gameplay until the end, it uh, should be enough. So let's uh, talk about the gear for now. Um, like I said, you don't need much gear or many uniques to make this work. So your most important unique is this one, Condemnation. You really want to find this. It's it still would, would work without it. Um, oh, sorry, I need to... Uh, the video is still running. Okay, now. So, yeah, you. it's also possible with, without Condemnation, but uh, it will just increase your damage by a lot if you find Condemnation. And I was lucky I found one with 800 item power. Um, it's quite good. So this will just boost up your damage, so I can highly recommend this. And um, yeah, your second weapon you just want a sword with critical strike damage and vulnerable damage mostly. And you also have all stats instead of dexterity, it's also very good. Um, yeah, but that's basically all. So this is your most uh, important unique, if you can find it, it's nice. Then, um, of course, your crossbow is very important. Um, all rogues want kind of the same kind of crossbow. You want a good crossbow uh, with critical strike damage, with vulnerable damage, and here I also have critical strike damage with immune skills, so kind of double critical strike damage. <laughs> so this crossbow is very nice, also kind of high item power. And for this build, uh, one problem, like it could be a problem, is if you play with rapid fire, you also want to have a yeah kind of high item level on your crossbow. Because otherwise, if you if you would play with uh, cutthroat skill only, like only with flurry, then you don't need uh, to have a good crossbow in like uh, regarding a high item power, okay? But um, since we are playing with rapid fire, you also want to have a kind of good DPS on your crossbow, so that could be also be a little problem. But yeah, I I managed to find one, and yeah, I, th I hope you will too. And then. On your boots, you would also like to have Penitent Greaves, but like I said, I didn't find them, so uh, instead I'm playing with some basic boots, which give me um, movement speed, which is quite helpful, and some energy cost reduction. And instead of, um, like, if you don't have Penitent Greaves, then you, I, I can highly recommend you to put in this uh, aspect, I don't know, is it called... Uh, quickening fog aspect or something. So this aspect um, will also get buffed, by the way, in the next patch. So at uh, August 8th, the next patch 1.11, um, this aspect will get buffed and it will increase all the values, kinda. So you will get up to three seconds cooldown reduction on dash. So very good. And so instead of Pending Griefs, you should play with this aspect and um, what this will give you is, uh, yeah, just automatically cast a smoke grenade after like at the end of dash when you dash into enemies so every combat you kind of want to start by dashing through and dashing in enemies and i will show you later in the skills we have also here the smoke grenade skilled and what this does is it will um like the enemies will get affected by the smoke grenade and they will take additional 20 percent multiplied damage so this is uh, quite a high uh, quite a nice damage um yeah increasement with this aspect al uh, alone. So I can highly recommend you using this instead of, of Penitent Griefs. And if you have Penitent Griefs, you can just move this aspect to your helmet, for example. So like here I have a helmet without an aspect at all. So <laughs> you see uh, you don't need uh, many aspects in this build. Um, so these are the most important. Um, then on your weapon I did mention you basically want um, critic uh, critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by up to 25 percent 
So yeah, these are the most important ones. Then of course you want to play with a flurry, put it on your ring for example. Then here I have a core skill cast increase my uh, basic skill attacks increase my next core skill damage by up to 30%. Um, you can put this on the ring on my amulet. I'm still playing with my 550 item power amulet. I found like uh, 20 hours ago. Um, here I have a very nice disobedience aspect. Um, so very good for armor. On your uh, on your pants or on your chest, you want to play with the with the umbers aspect. So this will allow you to uh, get three dark shrouds and. I, you will also see later I also have skill Dark Shrouds and this is simply because this gives me 8% uh, critical strike chance if I have 4 active shadows, so very nice little synergy here. And here yeah, on your chest you want this uh, Might, I don't know, aspect of Might, so basic skill ground to 20% damage reduction. Also very good defensive aspect. And on my gloves uh, I have experimented with some uh, options and I think this one is pretty good because we don't have many ways to increase our critical strike chance since we are not playing with uh, traps or knocking back mechanics. Um, so this aspect is quite nice especially with flurry because flurry makes all of the enemies vulnerable at once. So with this aspect we are getting about yeah up to 9% critical strike chance for making enemies vulnerable and if you hit like a pack of uh, let's say 10 enemies um, I have calculated this, then um, when you hit, when you make 10 enemies vulnerable at the same time, then you can expect about 2 procs of this aspect, okay? So on, av on average you will get 6% critical strike chance, and sometimes even more. So 6 to 9% extra critical strike chance is very good for this build. So yeah, this aspect I can also recommend. Um, <clears throat> Like I mentioned, you yeah only need condemnation basically. All everything else it's uh, quite um, optional, but nice to have. And now the skills. So uh, <clears throat> we are always playing with uh, here three points into puncture. And here we put all points into flurry and go into improved flurry for this vulnerability effect. We don't need siphoning strikes uh, here. So that's also um, yeah that's also another advantage of this build. Flurry has a massive heal. So it has up to 12% maximum life heal. So Siphoning Strikes give you only up to 3. So this is 4 times more heal than Siphoning Strikes. So another big advantage of Flurry against uh, Twisting Blades with Siphoning Strikes. So yeah, and then we also max out Rapid Fire. And Rapid Fire, by the way, this is like I said, the stream of Udio came up with this build first. And the basic idea is that you most of the time, like 90% of the time, you use Flurries. But um, sometimes, I don't know, maybe I can show this. Sometimes you use your rapid fire, for example, if you're fighting the boss, then I'm using only rapid fire because rapid fire deals uh, two or three times uh, more damage than flurry. Uh, here I get stuck in a stupid situation. Um, so yeah, you just use rapid fire for the boss fight, for example, or also, I don't know, yeah, if you, uh, like here, there's one elite, He's uh, he's on his own. So instead of flurry, I can use rapid fire and give uh, and deal much more damage, um, much more DPS. Okay, so that's why we have a rapid fire. We just use it on single targets and bosses, and it's very helpful. So here, advanced rapid fire. You also want to evade uh, as often as you can with this build. So you cast a rapid fire, and while casting rapid fire, you can instantly evade, and then you will proc this 30% uh, increased critical strike uh, bonus. Uh, then we have three points into shadow uh, step, like in total three points, and also uh, into dash, very important because we don't have panting griefs, we need some kind of CC, and dash with the discipline dash will give us a slow, which is very helpful for further CC, and also with the aspect also uh, we yeah, dazed enemies. Then here, like I mentioned, smoke grenades, you take this uh, enhanced smoke grenade just for the 20% um, damage bonus with this aspect here. So smoke grenade casts automatically with your dash. And here, like I also said, countering dark shot for more critical strike chance. Then you want to maximize your damage, so you put all these points into the passives here. 
Um, here also precision for critical strike. Then you max out your shadow imbuement basically. You take mixed shadow imbuement for more damage. Two points in consuming shadows is enough for your resource management. And here you only take adrenaline rush and haste. Um, and here I play with close quarters combat because it will give me more attack speed and more damage. So very nice and uh, you saw in this gameplay I played 10 levels above me and I still could tank basically anything. I just died one time in this uh, very difficult chamber with like 10 elites and all of them have freezing effects. Um, yeah, but besides that it's very easy to survive so close quarter combat is very good. No need for momentum for now. And the Paragon. So... I can recommend starting with critical, like with the combat glyph, which increases your critical strike damage. Um, it's like the best glyph uh, for this build, I think. Then I went to Tricks of Trade, instantly took uh, here the Brawler node and then Tricks of Trade legendary node for more damage. So yeah, we, we use like uh, Puncture anyways all the time because we're playing with combo points. Um, by the way, you can also, like with combo points, you can um, either just attack one time with Puncture and then switch to Flurry and then again one time with Puncture and again Flurry. But you can also play with, uh, like, uh, you could attack three times with Puncture and then cast one uh, cast of Flurry, especially if you're playing with this aspect here, which increases your damage um, by up to 10% per basic attack. So it's up to you. I like to mix it up and... Um, yeah, but you usually want to max out your uh, combo points. So yeah, Tricks of the Trade is very good addition. And then I take this Diminished Note here. Diminish is a very good uh, glyph, I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean this glyph. Diminish it's a very good glyph for the Tricks of the Trade board because we get uh, a lot of armor and we get damage to elites. So very good glyph overall. Then we take this note here for more critical strike damage. And the third board is a cheap shot. Um, so we want to take this legendary note. So we that's why we also want to cast dash all the time because if we dash through the enemies, we will proc this cheap, sh uh, sh cheap shot note and also our um, passive, uh, our uh, here, close quarters combat. And also, yeah, this note, so additional 25% damage. And then I basically want to take <laughs> all of these rare nodes. They all are good because they all provide armor, which is very helpful and also some decent damage. And here I have the turf uh, glyph for now, but I will change this up uh, later. So this is like I would start this build for leveling and I also can provide you with uh, uh, with my max roll planner. Wait a second. Ah, here, what the fuck. With my max, max roll planner, so after you reach level 100 or like level 90, 95, you can start to respec some things. And then I have this uh, yeah Paragon board for the late game, kind of. And so here you can already see I kind of switched some things up. So here I put the control glyph on my starting board. And here on the cheap shot, I put the combat uh, glyph instead and later we get the closer glyph which is very good we get the devious glyph which is good for this cunning strategy board since we get a lot of core skill damage and armor and uh turf is my last glyph on my sixth board so yeah but you can uh, copy this if you wish to play this build in the late game but um yeah for leveling this is just fine how, how i have it now so yeah, this is my guide for Shadow Flurry Rogue, Rapid Fire Flurry Rogue. Oh yeah, sorry, the hearts, I forgot the hearts, as always. Um, so you want to play with um, two Vicious Hearts and one Brutal Heart. So the Brutal Heart is like always the one that um, uh, suppresses damage, so up to 20% damage reduction. Um, very good for all kind of Rogue builds. Um, then you want this Vicious Heart that gives you more critical strike damage. So most of the damage comes from critical strikes anyway, and it doesn't matter if we deal less damage um, without critical uh, strikes. So yeah, I think this is um, pretty much worth it. 
And here, like I said, I have this uh, Ruffle Heart, but it's kind of bugged for me. I don't know why, but it's not proking at all. So I would recommend you to um, replace this with, uh, for example, the heart that stuns enemies. And because if you later will find your Panting Griefs, um, you will get you will yeah get the possibility to uh, add much more powerful synergies to this build. I can also show you very quickly. Um, so in the late game, if you found your Penitent Griefs, you uh, can play with the Frostbitten aspect. I really like this aspect, if you maybe know from my other videos. So then with your with the chilling effect from Penitent Griefs, you are able to uh, freeze enemies around you and you will get additional 25% critical strike damage, which is also very nice. And yeah, that's why you um, uh, sorry, I'm gonna, yeah, you want to uh, play with this uh, heart that have a twenty percent chance to launch two stun grenades. So these two are your vicious hearts, and yeah, this is your brutal heart. So like I said, no need for ruffle hearts. But if you would like, you could uh, like me play with this ruffle heart. But for me, it's bugged. I don't know. Maybe it's just for me. Uh, maybe I did something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with some specific skills I'm using. Because I already found out that, uh, for example, this uh, brutal, uh, brutal Heart here also kind of depends on which skills you use in your skill bar. Um, sometimes this will proc your um dash aspect to explode and sometimes not depending if you are playing with a poison trap for example but yeah this this uh, goes too deep into the uh gaming bugs of this game so yeah just forget it anyway i hope this guide was helpful and you have much fun with this flurry rogue build uh leave me a comment if you have some feedback maybe i uh, forgot something so until there have a nice day and see you in the next video bye bye